One of the primary aims of higher education is to prepare students to achieve success in their future careers. While working towards academic qualifications and gaining important life skills are often considered crucial aspects of career preparedness when at university, more and more importance is now being placed on the value of experiential learning. Where experiential learning is an engaged learning process where students learn by doing and by reflecting on the experience. Internships therefore play an important role. Learning then does not only take place in the classroom, but participating in internships can provide students with many benefits within the context of learning. In our many conversations with our IT industry advisory board members, we have often been told that soft skills such as communication, leadership, problem solving and teamwork are even more important than technical skills. Our panel this morning will present the organisational and personal perspectives on students' preparedness for the workplace. We have Ms. Caroline Yao, who is a Senior Manager, Talent Acquisition from the SALT Systems. She will present industry's expectations of their employees and how they help the interns and graduates successfully transition from student life to life as a productive employee. From a graduate's perspective, we have Ms. Jocelyn Lin, who is now working as a Services Software Expert Associate at the SALT Systems. Jocelyn is one of our help achievers, and we are all very proud of her achievements. Jocelyn will share her experiences as a student and now as a full-time employee. Last but not least, we have Mr. Andrew McClyman, a final year Bachelor of IT student who is now on a one-year industry placement. Andrew was specifically chosen as an intern by the COO of GeoView, who also happens to be one of our successful Help IT alumnus. There will be a Q&A session after all the speakers have made their presentations. And if you have any questions, please type them in the chat box and the speakers will answer them during the Q&A session. May I now invite Ms. Caroline, who is in Singapore, to deliver her presentation. Caroline. Thank you, Dr. Sien, and thank you, Help University, for having Dassault Systems and myself today. Uh, moving on. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, a little bit about my personal experience. Um, I studied uh, engineering for as a start. I'm an engineer. However, I landed on my first job as a regional business analyst. Along the way, with the skills and the knowledge that and the ability that I've built, I move on into consulting where I service clients across various industries. So one day, I realized that I have the right skills to be um, a HR business partner. And definitely, given the opportunity, I move on to a HR expert uh, or rather specialist. And then uh, started to look at talent management. And my passion is definitely in talent acquisition, Yeah, in the selection of uh, students, professionals, and also keeping tabs of the emerging skills that are needed. Thank you. Next slide, please. So what is Dassault Systems? Dassault Systems is a global French company. We have more than 100 offices around the world, and we, our software spans across 11 industries. And uh, the top industries that we are serving right now will be the manufacturing, logistics, as well as building of um, smart cities, leveraging on our simulation, Biovia, as well as Delmia uh, brands. Moving on. Yeah. So a little bit about uh, more about Dassault Systems. We have been around for more than 20 over years and across 11 brands, we are able to uh, 
uh, we are considered one of the most sustainable company because we are able to build new innovations, new ideas and transform according to the economy needs and not, not just focusing on products. Moving on. Yeah. So what is our legacy? 3D experience um, company from 3D design in 1981 and then evolving to 3D PLM PLM as in product life cycle management in 1999 and in 2012 we discovered our new mission and purpose that is to harmonize products, humans and bring more experience to the world by using products. Moving on. Yeah, so what is Dassault Systems involvement in the fight against COVID-19? Um, every one of us would have known that it's an unprecedented uh, situation where everybody, uh, especially the health healthcare industry, they are all uh, scrambling <coughs> to ensure that they have enough PPE, which is the personal pro protective equipment, as well as ventilators, right? Um, so how does the system quickly engage with our partners and also the industry leaders in speeding up the production of uh, ventilators as well as the mask and the protective equipment for healthcare workers. Recently, Daso Systems also engaged uh, in M&A uh, with MediData. MediData is a health science life um, or rather life science um, company, software company that deals with clinical trials. So with the purchase or rather the acquisition of MediData, we became even more uh, visible and we could fight against, uh, help to fight against COVID-19 even better. How did we do that? We partner with university by using or leveraging on our BioVia software, which is um, targeting the life science industry for free researchers and uh, leveraging on our software in, uh, to enable clinical trials as well as uh, support uh, researchers to be able to develop vaccines uh, for the next phase to fight against the virus. Okay, what makes um, Dassault System Malaysia office that interesting? The top three reasons why students and professionals join Dassault System Malaysia. First, from the slide here, you probably notice that we have a beautiful office. So with beautiful, with a beautiful office, you definitely would want to be associated with the awesome people. So in Dassault Systems, we believe in collaboration as well as bringing um, new experience in terms of learnings and teachings to our new employees. How do we do that? We provide timely feedback as well as um, a certification and training to develop them to become professionals. Last but not least, one more uh, reason is that Dassault System is one of the most uh, innovative company that is transforming the industry. So how does how do Dassault Systems or employers engage uh, with workforce of the futures these days? These are some of the events that we have hold um, we have held across the world, or rather the region in Indonesia, Malaysia, and Vietnam as well as Thailand. So we organize hackathons. We have uh, university engagements by having careers day, inviting uh, the students to our workplace to experience our culture and also to speak with our leadership team. So I think the students might notice one of the slide. Uh, we have slide, uh, we have one of the slide we have helped university students. Yeah, on it. Next, please. Yeah. So how do we do talent matching? And how do we select students? So what the school can provide with all of pro provide all of you with is definitely the technical knowledge and to prepare you theoretically um, the abilities needed to perform certain tasks, right? Like for instance, uh, a programming language. However, 
um, what the employers are looking for um, in this era, right, would be the emerging skills and how do you differentiate yourself between the technical skills that you have learned in school versus the soft, soft skills which will relate to the way you behave and your personality traits that helps you to be successful. This is important because when you move into a new workplace and when you move anyone move into a new environment, there will definitely be social aspects and the way you communicate, the way you solve a problem, do you solve it in uh, consultation with your manager, with your team members? Do you ask the right questions? Are you inquisitive? As well as whether you are able to uh, think of, out of the box and when you are able to sell your ideas across, what kind of techniques do you use to persuade and to influence? That is it done through storytelling? Yeah. So these are the skills that <clears throat> most employers are looking forward to uh, be able to evaluate students for. Next slide, please. Thank you. So part of our talent matching process, DASU system organized hackathons. However, due to COVID-19, the selection and assessment process is um, changing. So we are transitioning to virtual. One of the aspects that we use to evaluate students or professionals would be the behavioral assessment. It is through gamification and definitely behavioral interview in order to be able to assess their soft skills. On top of that, um, for university students and to build the workforce of the future, there are other tools that we use to assess the students, but it's definitely through gamification, fun and engaging manner. And these, would, these are likely to assess their um, cognitive abilities such as memory, whether you're able to uh, uh, capture information and then uh, use it for reasoning. They also, the tool also tests a little about logical thinking as well as your ability to solve problems. Next slide, please. Okay, so what is the formula for success for the workforce of the future? It's definitely skill sets, which is your technical skills combined with your soft skills or behavioral skills. And definitely the most important would be the mindset with the unprecedented uh, crises like COVID-19, I'm sure there are a lot of ideas and anxieties running across uh, your mind. Uh, would I be getting a job? What is the economy looking like? Are employers um, still recruiting? My answer to you is, if you have built a strong technical skill set, as well as you are ready with your soft skills and your behavioral skills, and you have the right mindset, there are still uh, pockets of opportunities and what employers are looking for is definitely skill set, but most importantly, mindset. Yeah, with that, we in Dassault Systems, we strongly believe that if anyone can change the status quo, we can change tomorrow, especially for the workforce of the future. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Caroline. The selection and training program for graduates certainly sound very effective and comprehensive in identifying and enhancing the graduates' skills and capabilities. I would now like to invite Jocelyn to talk about her learning experiences. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Jocelyn. Uh, I was a student at Help University for three years, and over the course of my stay, I've grown and learned more than I thought possible. Um, next slide, please. Uh, before entering uni, I was a dinosaur when it comes to modern technology. I wasn't modern. Um, I didn't use a lot of technology, and I didn't know the basic computer terms. So I thought that the transition from high school to university, for me personally, would be very difficult. But to my surprise, um, it wasn't as tough as I thought it would be. And it's all thanks to the faculty and the people I met in help, especially the lecturers. My lecturers are very caring, they are very patient, and they are very passionate about their students' success. 
Um, they always push us hard in learning new skills, and they went beyond in everything they did to prepare us for Industry 4.0. Um, when I first started at Help University, uh, next slide please. I thought I was going to spend um, the next few years learning computer terms, um, coding, and more coding. Uh, however, I quickly found that I was very wrong, and there was so much more into it. I had to learn things that I did not set up for, like writing documentation, learning how to pitch, um, learning entrepreneurship, business skills, presentation skills, user experience, and a lot more. And although I hated how hard it was, I'm really thankful that my lecturers taught us these skills because, um, next slide, please. Yeah, because learning how to code is just not enough anymore. And we need more skills that will help us to fit in the society. Um, my batch or help IT students in general have been practicing and developing presentation skills. And by learning how to properly present, we have also built the confidence and ability to share ideas and our opinions. It has also certainly helped us to gain real world skills, um, such as the ability to present accomplishments during a job interview. My lecturers have also taught us skills that we prepare us for in a certain future, and that is through entrepreneurship education. They taught us how to identify problems before we learn how to solve them. And you see, problem solving has been taught in um, schools for decades, uh, but the same cannot be said for problem identification because traditionally, problem solving is taught by presenting students with issues that are already clearly identified by someone else. And in the real world, problems can only be solved when they have been properly identified and described. So entrepreneurship education is important because um, it teaches us teaches us to identify problems we have never encountered before. And I feel that it is a skill that will be very useful in tomorrow's world. Um, moving on, the opportunities I was given by my help lecturers were incredible. I was encouraged to participate in different events and competitions. And one of the highlights of my student life in help university is the SAS FinTech challenge that I participated in. Uh, we participants were asked to generate innovative fintech ideas for banks. And my team came up with a system called Personal Information Holder. It's a system that removes the need to go to the bank and wait in long queues by allowing the customers to perform functions and assess services online. Um, I'm glad I joined this competition. Uh, next slide, please. Because it empowers us by giving us a good understanding of banking and finance and while testing our skills in the application of IT. Um, all the participants were challenged to think and learn new skills beyond the classroom. And for me, the ultimate takeaway from the competition was the experience in pitching FinTech concepts and ideas to the industry professionals. Our critical thinking skills and problem solving abilities were also tested throughout the competition and as a fresh graduate, I feel that these soft skills are an added advantage in building career. Um, another highlight of my student life was the internship at the company I'm currently working for, which is Dassault Systems, or for short, 3DS. Um, I came to know about this company through help. I joined the company tour with an open mind, wanting to do internship with a global company such as Dassault Systems. And after hearing what it had to offer, I set up as an intern. I was interning as the QE. Next slide, please. Quality engineer. And I loved every minute of it. I helped my boss to write uh, automated test scripts. And I attend meetings with business consultants. And I was really happy and thrilled that my boss actually trusted me enough to lead the discussion with the business consultants. And he really allowed me to have work that I could own throughout my internship program. I have also learned a lot working as an intern thanks to the learning opportunities this company has to offer. Apart from the technical skills, I was able to improve my soft skills like how to communicate more professionally and how to set expectations and I was also able to gain industrial exposure. And apart from this, um, what attracts me the most is the culture and energy embodied and displayed by every single employee because 
They made it so exciting to go to work every day. My colleagues are friendly. They are smart, supportive, helpful, and they care deeply about my well-being. We bonded very quickly, and they didn't hesitate to show me everything I needed to know. Overall, it was a fun experience to be able to work with them and witness the different skill sets everyone brought to the table. Now, between the experience gain and the people I was able to work with, this internship was more than I could ever hope for, and it helped me to grow both professionally and personally in such a short time. Uh, next slide, please. But to be honest, this experience was really beyond my expectation. Um, initially, I thought the only thing I'll miss at the end of the internship is the pantry full of free snacks and coffee. But turns out, the thing I miss the most from interning at Dassault Systems is the experience and the people I work with. Because as an intern, I've had opportunities to work for real projects, which have taught me skills that I definitely couldn't learn in the classroom. The knowledge gained from being at Dassault Systems will be things that I can really carry with me throughout my entire career. And after my internship, I really did miss all the experience and all the wonderful people whom I've worked with. And of course, the free snacks and the extra coffee, extra strong coffee. Um, moving on. Yeah, now I'm just giving my opinion based on my experience. And I'm pretty sure experience differs for each individual. But I hope everyone who will be entering university soon will make the most of your university life. Please remember that learning during your university years um, doesn't have to be restricted to a classroom. So take advantage of the numerous learning opportunities that are now accessible to you and reach your student life by getting involved outside the classroom, join events, um, competitions, so that you'll be able to taste test different programs and learn from experts in diverse fields. And remember to connect with the lecturers and take in as much information as possible because they can really help you in unimaginable ways. Um, next slide, please. Uh, lastly, I hope that you guys will go for the internship, and enjoy the ride, but at the same time, try to learn as much as you can because the learning curve is really different from what you're going to go through in the classroom. Now, some people might think that a few years of schooling will prepare you for everything that could ever be thrown your way, but in reality, you'll be presented with situations you've never been exposed to before. Um, while things we learn in school or classroom are useful, there will be times when you're expected to learn something new. And what may be scary and overwhelming to do something you aren't familiar with, an internship is a learning experience. So don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask for help if you need it. And to recap, internships and job experiences come with many benefits. Um, firstly, it gives you an opportunity to apply the knowledge from classroom to real experience. Um, secondly, it gives you an opportunity to learn more about yourself, uh, giving you a chance to explore what a career in IT field will be like. Because sometimes reality does not meet expectations. So at this point, you'll be given a chance to decide whether you want to continue with your current career path or try something else. Um, thirdly, it prevents you... Uh, it prevents your CV from going to the trash because internship means experience and internships are the perfect way to enhance your resume through relevant experiences. So during internship, um, after you gain new skills and abilities, it will certainly help you to improve yourself as a young professional and furthermore enhance your resume. And lastly, it helps you to gain new knowledge like how a professional workplace operates um, like for me, I've only ever read about how organizations function in textbooks or hear it from guest speakers who talk about organizational structures or dive into case studies about workplace culture, but nothing compares to living the actual experience. And internships will help you to learn about all this, the workplace culture, the employee relations and leadership structure, which will help you to get on board in your first job with more ease. So don't be afraid of internship. Um, embrace the challenges you face during internship and use them as learning opportunities for the future. Thank you. Thank you, Jocelyn. Congratulations on all your achievements. May I now invite Andrew to share his learning experiences at HELP and the company that he's now currently interning with. Andrew? Thank you, Doctor. 
Um, in this presentation, I'm going to compare and contrast HELP and the Work-Based Learning Program. I'm going to show how HELP creates a critical foundation that will become the cornerstone of your career as you build it. Um, and I'm going to illustrate how HELP's Work-Based Learning Program provides a graduated entry into the business world, bridging the gap between academia and career. In my first slide, um, I'm going to have a look at the overview of the difference between university and the work-based learning program. Help University gives you the overview, the instructions and the practice that you need to work in the IT industry. I like to make an analogy that it provides the bicycle. It teaches you about the bicycle, it shows you all the components, it shows you how it works, it allows you to practice on the bicycle. But it is impossible, as we all know, to learn to ride a bicycle from a textbook. The only way you can ride a bicycle is to get on it, fall off it, get back on it again, and eventually you get it to work. The only way that HELP can do this for us is by introducing in this work-based learning program, which gives us an opportunity to ride the bicycle, to get on it, to fall off, not to be punished for falling off, to get back on the bicycle and to continue riding. I'm going to dig into the details now, starting with the cornerstone of your career that HELP holds and to show you what HELP University brings to the table. In providing the bicycle in our analogy, the HELP lectures have knowledge and experience, and what they've done is HELP has collected together all these teachers who have been working in the industry for years, who know all the topics inside out. They've spent each of them 20 years learning these topics and experiencing them, and there's no way that one human being could learn all of that stuff. Fortunately, we have these lecturers who have combined their knowledge together and picked out the most pertinent facts that we need to know that we will be using every single day in our workplace. And this forms a fantastic foundation on which to build our career. We then obviously have to continue to learn ourselves. You never stop learning. Um, if you stop learning, your career is going to come to a sliding halt. Um, so instead of us having to, I mean, you've all been on Google, you search one thing, you get a million pages. It's impossible for you to find what you need to do. So it's such a joy to be able to go into a lecture at HELP and to be shown precisely what you need to know, what the most important thing is to know. The other thing HELP does is they del deliver a thorough learning experience through a crafted syllabus by isolating these facts in the lectures, by going into the tutorials and in essence beginning to make you to practice what you've learned in the lectures. And then the assignments, which not a lot of people realize, are designed to put you under pressure. And this is beginning to be the same as the work pressure you're going to, to receive. And I don't know quite know if it's a human thing, but for myself, I suddenly get uh, an enlightenment of knowledge just after I hand in my assignment. Because the pressure the assignment put me under makes me suddenly understand the concepts. And this is a very useful thing because also in real life, um, your assignments are going to be much longer. They're not going to be two days. They're going to be an entire year and you will be facing a deadline. Um, so this is an extremely useful thing to know. The third thing is that help ingrains best business practice. When I first came to help, I didn't really understand coding at all. And when we learned the coding, they always had these strange variable names. And I always thought, why don't they just put an X for X equals whatever, just like maths, for Y equals whatever. And um, in help, Mr. Cock always said, no, you have to name your variables correctly. You've got to name them this. And they would, they would name them in such a strange way that I never understood until I was in the workplace and I was on my 90,000th line of code. And I just thought, thank you, help, because you taught me to label variables properly. I know what this variable is. If it just said X, I would have absolutely no idea. But I want to contrast that in the classroom, you think 
so often, why are they teaching me this? This is so strange. It would be so much easier just to do this. And when you're in the workplace, you realize exactly why they taught you that. And the nice thing is it's just subconscious. You just know it. Now I would like to have a look at the transition into the workplace through the uh, workplace learning. This is where we're riding the bicycle. The first greatest thing about work-based learning is unless you do something really inappropriate, you aren't going to be fired. If you make a mistake, you aren't going to be fired. Your boss knows that he's there to mentor you, he's there to train you, he's there to show you what the experience is like. It is quite terrifying because this is my first degree. When I left A-level, I went straight into the workplace and the pressure and the intensity of trying not to make a mistake so I didn't get fired was huge. With this work-based learning, we can now move into the workplace and we've had an entire year of getting used to the office. If you remember the first time you went into first year at HELP, the first day was panic, the first lecture was panic, trying to get joined onto the Wi-Fi, it was all very busy and overwhelming. By the time you came to second year, it was all easy. You knew where the cafeteria was, you knew where level five was, you knew where to study, you knew where the library was. And so work-based learning acts as this transition between total theory uh, into the workplace. So by the time you start your career, you won't be panicking. All the other new people working with you will all be panicking. And after a while, you'll find they follow you like little ducks because you will be the only one after work-based learning who will know the ropes and know how things work. Um, one of the big things you're going to learn is meetings. We don't really understand meetings at university. But once you're in the workplace, you have meetings to decide to have a meeting to talk about something. And uh, that expands. The other thing I found is work-based learning under the HELP program adds a depth to my learning. So now when I look at lectures, I can actually apply them to real life and I can see straight away um, exactly what's going on. The other thing is that I can bring the work skills I've learned into the classroom. We do a thing called test-driven development, which is an entirely different way of coding, where you think of the result of a test first before you start to compose your code. I can now bring this into my assignments and into the, into the coding that I'm doing at the same time as the work-based learning. And it makes my entire university experience much more three-dimensional and technicolor, and I begin to see things. I like to describe it like the matrix. Suddenly, I can see everything and how it all relates. And it's instead of just seeing these letters and these words, I can actually see what's going on. The other big thing with work-based learning is it is a very good place to create a network. And what you need to realize is that you're going to meet future clients in your workplace that you may not expect, and you're going to meet uh, future employees. Every single meeting I have in the workplace, I regard as an interview. It might not be an interview for me necessarily. It might be me interviewing the other person. Help teaches us to look to the future. And one day you will run your own software development company. And this is a golden opportunity to work with people and to start to look at your team that you might have in the future and say, oh, these people work hard. These people don't work hard. These people sit on Facebook all day. Um, so it's very interesting. But likewise, remember, the same thing happens to you. Every single person who looks at you is thinking, that guy's on Facebook all day. I won't be employing him again. So this is a, a fantastic scenario that you, you can't get in the classroom. The other thing within the teamwork is you learn hierarchical teamwork. At HELP, you have four people uh, in a team. It's only going to last one semester. So if one of them is lazy, oh well, you work through it. At work, you can't get away from your team. They are there forever. So if you do not understand the politics and you do not understand how to deal uh, with the politics and how to approach people, you're going to be stuck with a very grumpy person for an entire year. And so the work-based learning teaches you that uh, you have to be diplomatic, you have to approach things in a certain way, you have to work out how the business works, you have to work out the personalities and how they work. Some people have been there 20 years. They have a certain way of doing things. They are not going to be changing. So when they walk in as your member of your team, they will just dictate what's going on. 
and you might have a better idea and you have to work out the politics. And again, like riding a bicycle, the only way to do it is to be there, to listen, not to say anything at the beginning, and then eventually work your way into how to get the team to work together. The last thing I want to mention about the work-based learning is you get specific mentoring. And what I mean by that is that help teaches you the broad strokes of something. I'll give you an example, version control with Git. When you go into the company, there will be various senior developers and mentors that will know everything about a topic because they started back in the days when people programmed in COBOL and they've done everything all the way through. And they will teach you every single aspect and they will dig deep and drill down into the topic that help has shown you. And they will show you absolutely everything you know about version control. So by the time you leave your year of work-based learning, you know 20 years of version control in your head and how it works and where it came from and who invented it. And uh, that gives you a big skill. Right. The um, I'd just like to quickly summarize five interrelated areas and leave you with this. Oh, one more thing on the specific mentoring. Um, when you arrive at HELP, you're in a state of what we like to call unconscious incompetence, which means that you don't know that you know nothing. HELP then starts to teach you and train you, and you begin to know that you don't know anything. They then take you a bit further, and they teach you how to do things right. So you're now in a state of conscious competence, and HELP's work-based learning program takes you that one step further where you get into unconscious competence. We've all seen the Python videos on YouTube where a man just types and says, oh, I'm going to spam the spammers, and he types Python like it's just flowing out of his fingertips. He is in a state of unconscious competence, and that is what work-based learning brings you to at the end, so that you're not thinking about the code. It's just flowing out of you. Things to capitalize on. I'm going to very quickly mention five things that I've already talked about. Build a network. You're going to make at least 50 contacts in the year that you're there. Those people will help you in your future career. They may be your employers, they may be your employees. Learn new skills from your senior developer. If you develop a relationship, he will be there for life. You will be always on the end of WhatsApp. Add experience to your CV. Every project you do gets added to your CV. Start building your CV. Start handing your CV out. The work-based learning will be chosen by help and you will get a very nice company, but it does not necessarily mean, as we've seen with COVID-19, that they will be able to employ you. But um, if you go to a company and the first company you go to is not a nice company, you need to be taking that CV and handing it out and moving on to the next company. I don't think that will happen from what I've seen. Most people end up working for the companies that I've based them with. But my point is get the CV, be handing it out, always be in the workplace. Um, fourth thing is deepen your old knowledge. The stuff that help has taught you, you can now like version control, get in and learn that thing backwards. Uh, so you become a master, not just a student. And then the last thing is you can make mistakes. Work-based learning is a risk-free zone. Everybody is on your side. Fall off that bicycle, get back on it. This is the time to fall off so that by the time you start your career, you are ready. And I'd like to end with this reflection from a man called Brian Eno, who I suggest you look up later. He says an inequality of opportunity exists, but there's also an inequality of readiness. When I was young, there were a lot of opportunities, but I wasn't ready. What Help University brings to you with the work-based learning is an equality of readiness. You are ready and it is just your job to grasp the opportunities that come back. So do it now. Thank you, Andrew. Great to know that you have found the link between academia and work. Ladies and gentlemen, we have heard from three different perspectives on how students are prepared for the workplace. I would now like to invite Ms. Ng Shumin head of the School of Information and Communication Technology to explain how academics prepare their students for the workplace. Ms. Ng? 
Hi. I'm going, I'm going to share my share my slide. So what we have seen is that there's the IT jobs have become very, very wide and varied. And how do we prepare our students for such a varied range of jobs? Because um, the jobs could be in applications development, where a lot of the demand is for, for and they can fill in roles such as, as analysts, developers, software engineers, mobile developers, software testers. But upon development of the application, they will need to deploy these information systems. And then we can also work in the IT infrastructure roles such as a systems engineer, systems operation, or in IT security or IT support. And once we have our information systems, we can then also analyze the data to improve upon our business operations um, and support the data-based requirements, uh, support the data growth in terms of being a data engineer or analyzing the data or improving and creating models so that we can actually improve upon our business operations by being a data scientist. So given the wide range of roles, right, what, how are we going to prepare the students for this? So it's a challenge that we have been facing. And I've been teaching in uh, technology for many, many years. And of course, we all, always have to improve and grow our curriculum to match the industry needs. So how do we do it? Um, one way that we have found that may have been useful is to provide a common case study, because when we teach one subject and we give them an assignment, sometimes the students do not appreciate the breadth of these assignments, you know, how, how much can we grow from this assignment. So we have tried to create a common scenario where the same scenario can be applied in different, different subjects. So for example, in systems analysis, we create the models to analyze the system. Then we program the system based on our analysis. We develop the system, uh, we produce the user experience design and so on. So these are all different, different subjects that are combined to give the students a complete picture of what their role is and what their roles can be in the industry, whichever areas that they want. So because in IT, we have to expose them to many different areas, many different technologies. So this is one way that we have found that helps us to bring everything together so that they see the full picture. We also try to encourage our students to explore new technologies and things that we are not able to complete because it does not fit in the learning outcomes of a specific subject, but are in the industry today and we need to present to our students. So we incorporate workshops and talks and we are very lucky that many people offer to share with our students their experience and new technologies that are coming up. So we have been carrying on these talks and even during the MCO, we have been able to continue to provide workshops to our students and to the general public. Of course, it is very important that we continue to collaborate with our industry partners and we have been doing this uh, continuously for many, many years. Um, we have also been supported by curriculum and certification from the industry players such as AWS um, SAS and Oracle. We have been supported by companies who provide us requirements for their uh, for the students' final year projects, where they are able to develop industry strength projects that support whatever the companies want to do. And of course, in terms of work-based learning, we are very fortunate that we have good industry partners who are able to provide very important opportunities for our students, as uh, Andrew has explained. And these students have come away with a lot of experience and being able to apply the theory that they learn throughout the final year directly into the workplace. And this is a very important uh, experience that they are able to have. And so we welcome collaboration with future industry partners and projects for our students because these are the way that they are able to do their experiential learning and to be able to apply the theories that they learn immediately. All right, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ng. I would also like to add 
that our faculty continuously review and enhance our IT programs. And as Ms. Ng has said, collaborate with industry experts to ensure that our academics and students are prepared for the fourth industrial revolution. We do not place focus on memory-centered learning, but on problem-solving learning, on real-world case studies, workplace experience, and teamwork. Our internships are mandatory. At HELP, we also offer a one-year industry placement as part of the 2U1I Workplace Learning Program, of which um, Andrew is now a part of. We always ensure that our students gain exposure to the real-life work, work environment so that their transition into the industry is as seamless as possible. Therefore, the 2U1I Work-Based Learning Program is an excellent platform for our students to be exposed to industry best practices. Um, we will now address some of the questions raised by, oh, I don't think any participants have raised and have entered any questions in the chat box. But if you would like to raise some questions now, could you please raise your hand? Okay, whilst you are thinking about some questions, I have a question for the speakers. The world of work is changing. It has been reported that 65% of children enter entering primary school today will be employed in jobs that do not yet exist. How can we support our students for the new world of work? And what do you think universities can do to ensure that these students are entrepreneurial, successful and fulfilled? Um, and any of our speakers can answer these que this question. Uh, Caroline, would you like to start? Uh, thank you, Dr. Sien. I think I can take that. Um, it is actually one of my. Uh, it's a very, very, it's a very good question and a very valid one. So I think. On, in terms of university preparation, I would think that university can only prepare our uh, the young talents only to a certain extent. However, it is even more important to teach the, the students or even the uh, young ones, right, to be the life skills that are needed to be able to prepare them for the future because we do not know what we do not we do not know what we don't know. Yeah. Um, Jocelyn and Andrew, would you have anything to add? No? Okay. Um, there is a question in the chat box. Is it necessary that IT students involve themselves in IT fields, but not other sectors. Uh, I think basically um, what the participant is asking is that are IT students restricted to the to IT fields when they work? Um, again, Jocelyn, uh, no, sorry, Caroline, could you answer that since you're in the industry? Uh, okay, that's a very good question as well. I think it's also interesting. Uh, take myself for example. I graduated uh, with a diploma in engineering and then I moved on to business in psychology. My first job wasn't an engineering job, so definitely there will be other fields and other job and you be your so, right. Sorry, Caroline, uh, we can't hear you. Could can you, you hear me? Uh, yes, we can hear now. Could you sort of rewind a few, uh, couple of sentences back? Yes, certainly. Uh, I think it's a good question, very uh, relevant, and I'm taking myself as an example. I graduated with an engineering uh, diploma, later on moved on to, uh, to to undertake a business degree that is more relevant to my um, work, right? 
So the answer to the students is definitely there are pockets of opportunities uh, for IT students who do not want to be in the IT role. Uh, give for example, that's what systems we do employ interns, okay, or rather engage interns and employ graduates in the finance space, in the HR space, but they may be dealing a lot more in data. They may be looking at HR technology, for instance, but they are not within an IT industry or they are with, they are with an IT employer, but they may not be just working on coding all day long and they are given the business and the support function perspective. Thank you. Um, there's another question which says, how can IT students use their skills in other fields? Um, some of our IT graduates have not continued on as uh, IT professionals. For example, we have one IT graduate who's now working in the STAR as a photographer and he is very successful. He has been a photographer at STAR for, I think, nearly 10 years now. And I think basically what we have is that we prepare students in terms of critical thinking, problem solving, and also provide them with background for the IT literacy so that they can continue on with this, uh, this as a basic knowledge in order to carry on uh, working in other industries. Uh, Andrew, would you have something to say to that? Um, so I've worked in the sound industry for 25 years. If you've ever been to a big concert in a stadium, that's the person who sits in the middle with all the flashing lights. And in my time, it's gone from an analog industry to a digital industry. So a lot of our very big mixers now work off Windows as an operating system. Um, the other thing is that we have a lot of wireless microphones. Um, it sounds strange, but when you see a microphone on stage and there's no wires on it, the sound doesn't come out the bottom of the microphone. It comes out loudspeakers. So you have to set up a wireless router that allows all these microphones to be in the right channels, to have the right IP addresses and all that sort of stuff. So the sound industry has a lot of IT um, application in it. And if you don't know what an IP address is, and you don't know these sort of things, it's very difficult to be a sound engineer. Um, you also have to sometimes reprogram the operating system of the mixer. So you need to know everything down to assembly language, which is what we get taught at home. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have now come to the end of our session. We would like to thank all our speakers for the informative and interesting insights into how the industry and university prepare students to excel in the workplace. Uh, thank you for joining us. We wish you a pleasant weekend and also a happy Father's Day to the dads. Hope you have a great day tomorrow. I will now pass the rest of the proceedings to Yin Yin. Thank you and goodbye from us. Hi, um, hi Dr. Sian. I think there's one last question from uh, uh, Liu oh, Kip Dr. Hui. Andy. Dr. Andy is asking, what is the greatest challenge in this modality of learning, which is work-based learning, and what would be at the advice you can offer for WBL students? Ms. Ng, would you like to take that? Uh, I think the challenge in terms of offering the modality of learning is to ensure that the students and are comfortable in their environment and to be able to continue to mentor them from the academic point of view while they are being mentored in the industry. And so this means that we need to maintain a very good relationship with the industry partner. And that is why that is a uh, important for us to choose our industry partners very carefully and we are very fortunate that we have been able to work well with our partners so that would be the challenge there is also an added challenge in that the students whilst they are working in the industry during this one year placement they will also be um, having to cover their academic studies so that is a challenge. Um, so shall we end now, Yin Yin? Uh, okay.
Um, okay, thank you, Dr. Sien, and thank you to all our speakers, Caroline, Jocelyn, and uh, Andrew. I'm really happy to know that help IT students are prepared for the workforce and uh, with the learning skills from classes, and I encourage to think out of the box. This is exactly what UD will see life should be. I'm not alone in thinking.